You're sitting at the doctor's office and they just told you that you have diabetes. Your brain immediately starts spinning like a washing machine on the fritz, and the first question that pops into your head is probably something like, can I make this go away? Well, today I'm going to explain diabetes and whether you can reverse it by lowering your A1C like you're 5 years old. And by the end, you'll understand what diabetes actually is, what A1C means, and whether you can wave a magic wand to make it all disappear. First, let's talk about what diabetes actually is. Imagine your body is like a big city and sugar is like the delivery trucks carrying energy to all the buildings. In a healthy city, there are special workers called insulin who help the delivery trucks unload their energy packages at each building. These insulin workers are made in a special factory in your body called the pancreas. And when everything is working properly, the delivery trucks show up, the insulin workers help them unload, and all the buildings get the energy that they need. Everyone's happy. But with diabetes, something goes wrong with this delivery system. There are two main ways that this can happen, and we call them type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, it's like the factory that makes the insulin workers gets destroyed. Maybe a fire burned it down, or maybe it just broke beyond repair. Without insulin workers, the delivery trucks full of sugar just drive around and around the city with nowhere to unload. The buildings are starving for energy, but the trucks can't deliver it. The sugar just piles up in the street, which is really bad for the whole city. With type 2 diabetes, the factory is still there making insulin workers, but something different is wrong. Maybe the buildings in the city have changed their locks and the insulin workers can't get the doors open anymore. Or maybe the factory isn't making enough workers for all the delivery trucks. Or maybe the workers are there, but they're too tired and not very good at their jobs anymore. The result is the same. Sugar delivery trucks pile up in the streets because they can't deliver their energy packages properly. Now, when doctors want to check how well your sugar delivery system is working, they don't just look at how many trucks are in the streets right now. That would be like trying to figure out how clean your room is by only looking at it the one day that your mom is coming to visit. Instead, they use something called an A1C test, which is like a report card that shows how your sugar delivery system has been working for the past few months. Think of A1C like this. Imagine every sugar delivery truck that couldn't find a place to unload left a tiny bit of sticky paint on everything that it touched. After a few months, you could look around the city and see how much sticky paint is on things. If there's a lot of sticky paint everywhere, it means there were too many delivery trucks that couldn't unload. If there's just a little bit of sticky paint, it means the delivery system was working pretty well. The A1C test measures how much of the sticky paint, which is actually sugar that got stuck to your red blood cells, is floating around in your blood. A normal A1C is like having just a tiny bit of sticky paint on things, which would be less than 5.7. When your A1C is between 5.7 and 6.4, it's like having a medium amount of sticky paint, which doctors call pre-diabetes. This means your delivery system is starting to have problems, but it's not completely broken yet. And when your A1C is higher than 6.5, it's like having lots and lots of sticky paint everywhere, which means you have diabetes. So now comes the big question. If you can get your A1C number lower, does that mean you can reverse diabetes? This is where things get a little tricky, like trying to explain why you can't just wish your broken toy back together. Now let's start with type 1 diabetes. Now remember, this is when the factory that makes insulin workers gets completely destroyed. If your factory burns down, you can't just lower your A1C and magically rebuild the factory. The factory is gone. People with type 1 diabetes need to get insulin from somewhere else, usually by giving themselves shots or using a special pump. They can definitely get their A1C into a healthy range by carefully managing their insulin and watching what they eat. But the underlying problem, the destroyed factory, is still there. So type 1 diabetes can't really be reversed, but it can be managed really, really well. Type 2 diabetes is more complicated. Remember, this is when the buildings change their locks, or the factory doesn't make enough workers, or the workers get tired and lazy. Some of these problems can actually be fixed. Well, at least partially. It's like if your room is messy because you have too much stuff. You might be able to clean it up by getting rid of some things and organizing what's left. When people lose weight, exercise regularly, and eat foods that don't require too many delivery trucks all at once, sometimes the insulin workers can start doing their jobs better again. The buildings might change their locks back to the original ones, the factory might start making more workers, the tired workers might get some more energy, and when this happens, the A1C can come down to normal levels, and some doctors might say that the diabetes is in remission. But here's the important part. Even when type 2 diabetes is in remission, it doesn't mean that it's completely gone forever. It's more like the delivery system is working well again, but it's still fragile. If someone goes back to their old habits, gains the weight back, stops exercising, and starts eating lots of foods that require many delivery trucks again, then the problems can come back. The insulin workers might get tired again, or the buildings might change their locks again. Let's look at the cleaning of your room example again. If your room was super messy and you spent all day organizing it, 
you could say that your messy room problem is in remission. But if you stop putting things away and start throwing clothes on the floor again, your room's just going to get messy again. The underlying tendency toward messiness didn't disappear, you just managed it really well for a while. And this is why doctors are careful about using the word reversed when talking about diabetes. They prefer to say it's in remission or well controlled. It's not that they're trying to be mean or confusing, it's that they want people to understand that managing diabetes is an ongoing job, not something you just fix once and forget about. So, can lowering your A1C reverse diabetes? For type 1, lowering your A1C is awesome and really important for staying healthy, but it doesn't reverse the underlying problem. For type 2 diabetes, getting your A1C into the normal range might put your diabetes into remission, which is fantastic, but it requires ongoing effort to keep it there. The good news is that whether we call it reversal or remission, getting your A1C into a healthy range makes a huge difference in how you feel and your long-term health. When those sugar delivery trucks aren't piling up in the streets of your body city, everything works better. Your energy levels improve, you feel better, and you're much less likely to have problems with your eyes, kidneys, nerves, and heart. The way to get your A1C lower involves several strategies. First, you need to reduce the number of delivery trucks that show up all at once. This means eating foods that don't cause big spikes in blood sugar. Foods like vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains send out delivery trucks slowly and steadily, while foods like candy, soda, and white bread send out huge convoys of trucks all at once. Exercising is like hiring more insulin workers and making the existing ones stronger and faster. When you move your body regularly, your insulin workers get better at their jobs, and your buildings become more willing to open their doors for deliveries. Even a simple walk after meals can help your delivery system work more smoothly. Losing weight, if you need to, can help fix some of the underlying problems in type 2 diabetes. It's like decluttering your city so that the delivery trucks can move around more easily and the insulin workers don't have to work as hard. Getting enough sleep is important as well. When you don't sleep well, it's like your insulin workers show up to work tired and cranky. They don't do their job as well, and the whole delivery system becomes less efficient. Managing stress also matters. When you're stressed, your body releases hormones that make it harder for the insulin workers to do their jobs. It's like having a city-wide emergency that makes all the workers distracted and less effective. Some people with type 2 diabetes also need medications to help their delivery systems work better. These medicines work in different ways. Some help the pancreas factory make more insulin workers. Others help the buildings open their doors more easily. And some slow down the delivery trucks so they don't all arrive at once. And some help the body get rid of extra sugar through the kidneys. The key thing to understand is that managing diabetes, whether you call it reversal or remission, isn't about one single magic number or one single change. It's about creating a whole lifestyle that supports a healthy sugar delivery system in your body city. Your A1C is like a report card that tells you how well you're doing, but it's not the only thing that matters. Regular blood sugar checks are like daily reports from your city managers, letting you know how things are going right now. Your A1C is like a quarterly report that shows the bigger picture. Both are important, but neither one alone tells the whole story. It's also worth noting that A1C goals can be different for different people. For some people, especially younger folks with type 1 diabetes who are otherwise healthy, the goal might be to keep A1C below 7. For older people or people with other health problems, the goal might be a bit higher to avoid dangerous low blood sugar episodes. Your doctor will work with you though to figure out what A1C target makes sense for your specific situation. The most important thing is not to get discouraged if your A1C doesn't drop as quickly as you'd like or if it goes up and down over time. Managing diabetes is like learning to ride a bike or play a musical instrument. It takes practice and there will be wobbly days. The goal though is progress, not perfection. Some people find it helpful to think of diabetes management as a daily practice rather than a destination. Each day you make choices about what to eat, whether to exercise, how to manage stress, and whether to take your medications. Some days you'll make choices that help your delivery system work smoothly. Other days, life just happens and you might not do everything perfectly. But that's normal and human. The beautiful thing is that your body is pretty forgiving. If you have a day where your blood sugar runs high because you ate birthday cake at a party, it doesn't undo all the good work that you've been doing. Similarly, if your A1C is higher one time than it was before, it doesn't mean that you're failing. It might just mean you need to adjust your approach or that you're going through a stressful time that's affecting your blood sugar. What matters most is the overall pattern over time. Are you generally making choices that support healthy blood sugar? Are you working with your healthcare team to adjust your management plan when needed? Are you learning and adapting as you go? If so, you're doing great, regardless of what any single number says. So let's recap this whole blood sugar adventure. Diabetes happens when your body's sugar delivery system breaks down, either because the insulin factory gets destroyed or because the delivery process stops working smoothly. Your A1C is like a report card showing how well your delivery system has been working over the past few months. 
Lowering your A1C is definitely possible and really important for your health, but whether that reverses diabetes depends on what type you have and how you define reversal. For type 1, great control doesn't fix the broken factory, but it does keep you healthy. For type 2, getting your A1C to normal might put your diabetes in remission, but it takes ongoing effort to keep it there. Either way, a lower A1C means that your body city is running more smoothly, and that's always worth celebrating. Now go forth and manage that delivery system like the capable city manager that you are. Your pancreas will send you a thank you card.